The competition's heating up for Ethereum in 2021. Other blockchains are coming out of the scene, trying to compete with Ethereum and dethrone it as the leading smart contract platform and world computer. So I'm going to talk about two competitors in particular today, Cardano and Polkadot, and how they compare to Ethereum, and which one I think is going to win out in the short, mid, and probably also long term. And exactly why I think that as a blockchain developer who works with this technology on a daily basis, because I get this question all the time. All right. So if you're new around here, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. And last but not least, I hate these disclaimers, but this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy Ethereum, DOT, or Cardano, or not to invest in them, any of that kind of stuff. And also there's lots of people impersonating me down in the comment section below. Don't respond to them. I'll never give you my phone number or ask you to invest with me. All right, so let's look at each of these smart contract platforms and see which one has the potential to rule them all. Okay, we'll look at each one individually, step by step, see how they're similar, see how they're different. So let's start off with Ethereum. So I'm sure a lot of you who've been watching my channel for a while are already very familiar with Ethereum, what it is and how it works. But if you're brand new around here, a quick recap. It's a blockchain that supports smart contracts, which basically allow you to create programs that run on top of a blockchain and create a world computer of decentralized applications. So the main use case for these smart contracts today are cryptocurrencies, other cryptocurrencies, and also uh, applications with decentralized finance or DeFi. So Vitalik Buterin is the mastermind behind Ethereum, along with several other co-founders, a couple of which I'll talk about here in a second. But uh, it, Ethereum has been live in production for over five years. And in that amount of time, it's been able to launch thousands of other cryptocurrencies on top of its platform with you know ERC-20 tokens. And it's also been a, a huge pioneer in the DeFi space and been able to secure, you know, $34 billion of total value locked inside of DeFi protocols right now, along with the you know thousands of other robust decentralized applications uh, with you know thousands and thousands of users. And if you look on Etherscan right now, you can see that Ethereum right now, it has close to 150 million unique addresses. And you can see the growth of that over the past you know few years has just been crazy. If you use Ethereum today, you're using Ethereum 1.0, but it's in the process of a multi-phase rollout to Ethereum 2.0. This will be the new and improved version of Ethereum that gets the blockchain ready for prime time, make it really fast, really scalable, and much cheaper to use than it is today. Now, as it gets today on Ethereum 1.0, it supports about 15 transactions per second, you know, give or take. And on Ethereum 2.0, it's going to be a lot closer to 100,000 transactions per second. And this is going to be a massive increase in the performance and scalability of the blockchain. And currently, we're in the part of a multi-phase rollout for Ethereum 2.0. We're currently in phase zero, then we'll move on to phase one, and then phase two. And after that transition is complete, we're also going to migrate from proof of work, which is what Ethereum 1.0 is, to proof of stake, which will really help support the scalability and the security of the blockchain itself. So while Ethereum is in the middle of this transition and still only scales to you know roughly 15 transactions per second and is very expensive, then that's making room for other competitors to come into the space and try to take some of this market share and maybe even dethrone Ethereum as the number one smart contract platform. So let's go ahead and look at the first competitor, which is Cardano. Cardano is another blockchain and smart contract platform that's trying to do it better than Ethereum. And so it's founded by Charles Hoskinson, which was one of the co-founders of the Ethereum project in the early days as well. And so he left Ethereum and you know, later created Cardano. So it hasn't had nearly as much time to capture users or even you know other applications built on top of it. And really, it, it can't just yet because it's not completely shipped in its full form. So let's, let's take a look at that. So Cardano is a proof of stake blockchain. It currently supports hundreds of transactions per second. And on their roadmap, they plan on introducing scaling solutions that can make it you know, much higher, you know, a thousand transactions per second per validator with that new design, okay? And so that's the thing you have to understand about Cardano right now. They are a part of this multi-phase rollout um, and it's time to record this video and they don't have all the full scaling that they hope to support long term. And right now they don't even have support for smart contracts. All you can really do on Cardano right now is like send the cryptocurrency around. You can't really launch applications on the mainnet and use them in a competitive way to start creating apps right now that could compete with Ethereum. And so while Ethereum is also in a multi-phase rollout, uh, you can still do everything you need to do on Ethereum today. It's just more expensive and it's slower. But even with that, you know, Ethereum has been able to get all these users on its platform uh, whereas Cardano still doesn't even have all the core functionality out of the box just yet. So now let's talk about Polkadot. So at the beginning, Polkadot was really talking about, you know, connecting multiple blockchains together. But now it's starting to function like a, you know, blockchain that can compete with Ethereum. 
Well, first, it was founded by uh, Gavin Wood, who is one of the co-founders of Ethereum. So it definitely has not been live anywhere near as long as Ethereum has. It's actually a relatively new project. So let's see how it works. Well, it uses the proof of stake consensus algorithm, all right, a lot like Ethereum 2.0 will, a lot like Cardano does. It does sharding a lot like Ethereum 2.0 will, but how it works is, is really unique. So it uses something called a relay chain, all right, which is kind of like the main chain itself that's broken up into a network of parachains, okay? And anybody can bring their own parachain to this system with parity substrate. So Polkadot boasts of superior scalability uh, with a thousand transactions per second, even without parachains, uh, but with parachains and multi-threading can maybe even get up to a million transactions per second. One thing to keep in mind with Polkadot is that they are also part of a multi-phase rollout, okay? So a lot of the core functionality is there with Polkadot as it exists today. And we might see some of those things roll out in 2021, but it's not like all the benefits are there today that you can just easily migrate over and now all your problems are fixed. And so which one of these platforms do I think will be the dominant smart contract platform and blockchain in the short term and also the midterm and probably the long term? Well, it's Ethereum. So here's why. Well, both of these other blockchains are basically trying to deliver the same benefits of Ethereum 2.0, and everybody thinks that they're going to be much faster than Ethereum 2.0 and siphon all of Ethereum's users, but not so fast. All right, the first thing you have to understand is that neither Polkadot nor Cardano have delivered all of their long-term promises yet. Cardano doesn't even have smart contracts live on its platform yet, which Ethereum has had for over five years and had all this time to develop, you know, applications with them. And while Polkadot has a lot of its core functionality, it still hasn't delivered on all of its parachain functionality or its scaling solutions. Now, true, these things could go live very soon in a matter of weeks or months. But think about what else these other platforms have to do as well. All right. They have to provide end users with enough value so they want to use these blockchains over, you know, something like Ethereum, for example. So let's say they wanted to create a DeFi ecosystem that was really fast, you know, scalable and cheap. That's one of the biggest use cases on Ethereum right now. So why would users want to go over to one of these platforms other than Ethereum? What would these applications have to do to satisfy that user demand? Well, if they're going to do that, they need a lot more than scalability. OK, first of all, they need applications that actually satisfy the demands for these users. You don't just need apps. You also need an ecosystem of apps that all talk to one another. These apps will need billions of dollars in liquidity to compete with what's happening on Ethereum right now. You need developers to create these apps. And in order to do that, you need developer tools, infrastructure, community, learning resources, all that stuff. And that's really hard to replicate. Okay, so you have to think about it. Basically, what these blockchains are trying to do is achieve the same benefits of Ethereum 2.0 before Ethereum 2.0 ships. But even if they're able to do that, you know, in the coming months or even year, they still have to get all this extra stuff. And that's a really hard problem to solve. And that's one of the biggest reasons Ethereum is so valuable right now, even though it's slow, kind of clunky and expensive. This is what's known as Ethereum's network effect. And I think this is the strongest thing going for Ethereum right now. And it's even more important than technical performance. Now we're going to get the technical performance with Ethereum 2.0 and also layer two scaling solutions. I'll talk about those here more in a minute. But these other platforms are really trying to outperform Ethereum in terms of scalability, but they're going to have a really hard time matching Ethereum's network effect. So to illustrate network effect, you can think about it this way. Think about a social network that doesn't have any users. Would you want to go use a social networking website where you couldn't add anybody else as a friend or communicate with them? Absolutely not. You know, we've seen lots of social network experiments over the years completely flop that may have been technically better or have more features, but they just didn't have the network effect. I mean, think about Google Plus, for example. So one reason it's really important to understand uh, network effect at a quantitative level is to illustrate how hard of a problem this is to crack or, or to do better than. So look at Metcalf's law. Basically, uh, this, this quantifies network effect. It says that the value of a communications network uh, is proportional to the square of the number of users connected to the system. So if you have one connection on the network or two people, it's one connection. If you have, you know, five, it's 25, you have a hundred, you know, it, basically the, the, the linear number of people that increase, it has an exponential increase in the value of the network itself. And it also means that it's exponentially harder to generate the same effect. And so if you have a blockchain that already has almost 200 million wallets, thousands of other cryptocurrencies already deployed on top of it, a rich DeFi ecosystem of other applications that all talk to one another and have $35 billion of liquidity locked into the protocols, then you might be able to come out with a technical solution that's you know technically better in the short term, but it still lacks all these other things. So that's what Ethereum has going for it, all right? That's the most important thing. It has it now. These other platforms don't have it. It's really hard for them to get it. And Ethereum's already in the process of fixing the technical problems that plague the blockchain today. Now, I know it's, that's easier said than done. There's no promises with Ethereum long term. But unless something just disastrous happens with Ethereum 2.0, it's going to be really hard for one of these other platforms to catch it 
gain the same amount of market share and then, you know, eventually overtake it as the number one blockchain smart contract platform. So now let's address some of the doubts and concerns because, you know, some people say, oh, no, that's not true. Like, you know, there's enough time for somebody to come in mostly because of Ethereum's fees, right? People are just going to stop with using Ethereum because the gas fees are way too high. So they are high right now. Part of that's because of network demand and also the price of Ether. But let's look at the actual gas prices themselves. So aside from the price of Ether, the gas prices are a reflection of the demand of the network. So when the fees are high in terms of gas price, that means people are demanding to use Ethereum, not some other platform, okay? So this is evidence that people are okay with using Ethereum as it exists right now in its slow, kind of clunky, expensive state because they're able to do things with DeFi. And that being said, there are solutions to this problem that are, are basically here. They just have to be plugged in and agreed upon by the community. And that's with layer two scaling solutions, all right? So layer two plus Ethereum 2.0 will make this problem way better in the long term. It's going to make the blockchain a lot faster, a lot cheaper to use. And it's just a matter of time before these layer two scaling solutions are implemented. And of course, in the migration over to Ethereum 2.0, people think, oh, but you know, scaling isn't here yet. ETH 2.0 isn't here yet. It could fail. We hope it fails so these other platforms can, you know, take over. But like, don't forget, like, like these other solutions haven't completely delivered on all their promises yet either. Cardano doesn't have smart contracts. You know, Polkadot doesn't have everything that it says it's going to do. And no one's actually sure that these things are going to ship in their full form before Ethereum 2.0 comes out. I also want to be very clear. Like, I'm not saying there'll be no use for these other platforms and that they're worthless or anything like that, okay? I'm just saying that it's highly unlikely that they're going to overtake Ethereum as the dominant smart contract platform anytime soon. I'm not saying it couldn't happen long term, but I, I really don't think so, okay, for all the reasons I've talked about in this. There could be lots of other use cases for these, you know, users on top of them, communities, their own applications. But I still think Ethereum is going to have the dominant market share for the foreseeable future. So, you know, that being said, like, a, this is not investment advice. I'm not trying to diss your investments if you're, you know, in these other projects. I'm just giving you my opinion as a technologist who watches this space every single day and I've done it for, you know, three years, going on four years. And the biggest caveat to all this is that it is still early in this space, okay? Things could happen that could change the dynamics of all this over the long term. But, you know, as I see it right now in February of 2021, the time to record this video, I just don't see how it could change dramatically. Which leads me to my next point, which I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, which is like, oh, aren't you just totally biased? Like, you're an Ethereum developer, you're an Ethereum investor, you're just like shilling Ethereum, man. So first of all, let's just clear something up. Like, I don't have nearly the online reach or the amount of ETH holdings required to manipulate the price of Ether, you know, a nearly $200 billion asset. So I'm not just like making this video to pump Ether prices. And so you might say, okay, okay, yeah, but you're still just biased, okay? But you have to look at it a different way, okay? So where have I made a ton of long-term investment in, in the skills to know this technology and also, you know, to invest in Ether? Because I've spent a ton of time researching and understanding the fundamentals of the space and said, this is what I think the winner is going to be. And so basically you can use my opinion is someone who's just like done all the hard work, had to figure this stuff out. And that's what I think. And I've got skin in the game because I'm making big bets on, you know, my own convictions. And that's, that's what my convictions are. And you're seeing why in this video. And here's the thing. At the end of the day, I'm not afraid to be wrong. Like if I am, I'll just change my mind. For the amount of time that I've spent, you know, doing all this, it'd be incredibly easy for me to just switch to something else and start doing that. But I haven't done that because I don't really see a good reason to. All right. So that's it. That's a comparison of Ethereum versus Polkadot versus Cardano and why I think Ethereum is going to win out in the short to midterm and probably also the long term. So as always, like I said, this is not investment advice. I'm not trying to bash anybody who, you know, invests in these other platforms. Uh, I'm not telling people not to invest in them or to invest in Ethereum or anything like that. I'm also not bashing you if you're a developer that works on either of these ecosystems. Like I said, these things, I, I don't think that they can never have any market share in the blockchain ecosystem. I'm just saying it's highly unlikely the te technology itself will gain larger market share than Ethereum in the short to midterm and probably also the long term. So that's all I've got. As always, smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you like this video. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step, then how can you get started today? We well, can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there, like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. If you like those, you want to take the next step, then I can show you how to build your own blockchain application from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, you don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero programming experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. All right, so that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.